variants of psoriasis are decided based on the site and the morphology. So, based on site psoriasis can vary or based on morphology also psoriasis can vary. So, first we will talk about sites. So, sometime psoriasis will affect only scalp. So, when it affects only scalp, it is difficult to differentiate it from seborrheic dermatitis because seborrheic dermatitis also presents with scaling on the scalp. So, what is the difference here? The psoriatic plaques will usually cross the hairline. Seborrheic dermatitis is limited to hair. Psoriatic plaques will usually cross the hairline. Psoriasis will not be itchy and it will not have any alopecia associated with it. Seborrheic dermatitis also may not have any alopecia, but it is itchy and it does not cross the hairline. So, morphology is same. You have this arythematous, indurated plaque with silvery scales which are crossing the hairline. So, look at this. So, this is scalp psoriasis. So, this is typical of scalp psoriasis. Now, sometimes what will happen? The scales that are there on the scalp will be really adherent to each other. So, in this case, I call it pitriasis emiantasia. Pitriasis means scaly. Emiantasia means thick asbestos like scaling. So, here there is heaped up scale which is present. Now, remember pitriasis emiantasia is not another term for scalp psoriasis. Pitriasis emiantasia can be seen in other disorders also where you see a persistent thickened deposition of scales on the scalp. But yes, scalp psoriasis can sometimes lead to pitriasis emiantasia. So, scalp psoriasis is one of the causes of pitriasis emiantasia where you see very very adherent scaling which is present on the scalp. Clear? Then I told you psoriasis affects extensors mainly. Sometimes psoriasis can affect the flexures also. Since it is the opposite of what it should be, we also call it inverse psoriasis. So, flexural or inverse psoriasis is when psoriasis affects flexures. Now, when it will affect flexures, it would be slightly different here because of constant maceration, scaling is less. So, you see a rhythma, but scaling is less and even in duration is less. So, it becomes difficult to differentiate it from intertrigo at times, but intertrigo usually would be itchy, whereas psoriasis, as I told you, is non itchy right so flexural or inverse psoriasis when it starts affecting the flexures here we see less scaling and less in duration then psoriasis can sometimes affect just palms and soles in which case i call it as palmo plantar psoriasis how does it present with it will present with hyper keratotic plaques with fissuring, hyperkeratotic plaques with fissuring and in soles it typically affects the insoles. So, palmoplantar psoriasis, so why am I dividing in based on site? Because my treatment changes and sometimes my differential changes. For example, if I have palmoplantar psoriasis, I have to differentiate it from hyperkeratotic eczema. Now, eczema would usually be more itchy. It can be oozy, but palmoplantar psoriasis is usually not itchy and usually not oozy. So, you see these hyperkeratotic plaques with fissuring on palms and soles. Then, psoriasis can affect nails also. Now, sometimes it's very easy. You have psoriatic lesions on the body and you have nail changes. But sometimes in 10% of patients, you may have only nail involvement. And there you need to know what are the typical nail findings that you see in psoriasis so that you know that you're dealing with nail psoriasis. So, 10% it is an isolated finding. Nail psoriasis is important because it is when nail psoriasis is present, there is an association with psoriatic arthritis also. Right? Now, 
when we study nail i will be telling you about different parts of nails nail matrix nail bed and other things now nail psoriasis can affect either the matrix or the nail bed you will not be asked about what feature is there of what so i'll straight away go to the important features that you see in nail psoriasis the first and the foremost and the most common nail finding that i see in psoriasis is pitting or pits as i call it so if you look at the nail you see these shallow depressions on nail plate these shallow depressions on nail plate are called as pits and the phenomena is called as pitting now you see pitting in other conditions also like alopecia areata some forms of eczema how is psoriasis pitting different it is deep it is random it is irregular and large so for example if i talk about alopecia areata there the pits are like this they are small they are regular they are very geometric whereas if i talk about psoriasis i will have pits like this they will be deep pit they would be random something like this they would be irregular and large so you can remember it with the mnemonic drill okay so two three important things here the question that is asked is most common nail finding in psoriasis is pitting then they sometimes ask you difference between the types of pits so you should know the type of pitting in psoriasis is deep random irregular and large so this is how it looks like so see this these are all shallow depressions on the nail plate